some core. Well, I'm going to do the beak, and then we're going to start building up the body with some core. And then I can decide, you know, if I want to add another layer on the legs. I'm still not exactly sure what look I'm going for. I think I should figure that out. See, he has black swax on his beak. His beak ended up a little bit big, especially it makes him not look so much like a baby. He just looks like a funny, funny little owl. Um, so um, I think I will use just oatmeal to do the beak. So I'm going to take about a four inch piece, split it in half lengthwise, stretch it out. I want to make it pretty nice and skinny because I'm trying to create a shaped skinny thing. So if this is all big and chunky, no matter how tightly I wrap, this will end up big and chunky. So I have more control when it's stretched out. So my four inch piece is now eight. This is, this is, see how that happens? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is why people get confused. So I'm going to start back on the head and follow my pipe cleaner down pulling tightly and what I want to do is think of a cone so thicker back here and super tiny point at the tip. And to make that tiny point I need to angle down in the direction that I'm wrapping down this way and then when I get here right at the tip I need to angle back up and pull it tightly like that. If I were if I were to just go around here, it would get thick and it would want to slide off. So that angle down and back is important. So to keep my cone shape, I'm going to build this up in here just a little bit more with a few more wraps. But I'm not going down to the tip again. I'm staying away from there. And angle back up. So now I can <laughs> That's like uh wonder if people can hear our phone ringing. I don't know. So this is nice and it's really tight and smooth um and pointy. So very that's beaky. good. Very beaky. Okay. Now we're getting into our off-white core. You have a great big bundle of it. And if you want to, just, you know, because you know your kit makes two, you can um, let it loose. Sorry, you guys can't see me right now. But, um, and, you know, find the center and break it in half so that yourself knows that this is how much you have for this owl and then you have the other piece for your other owl. There should be plenty so um, unless you totally mess up I wouldn't worry. So we're going to wrap the head and body and tail and I like to work with nice kind of um, eight inch eight inch pieces of core. Definitely split this in half. This is real fluffy and then give it a nice stretch out so that it's not such a chunk. Just gently, gently pull it. And the first one, we'll start in front of the hind legs and wrap up the head. If you're right-handed, it's gonna look like this. But I'm left-handed, so it's gonna look like this. Each pass holds down the wrap before it. Whoops. That's all right. Just keep going. All right, so I have this whole Um, thing covered with at least one pass. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. 
Now, we have another half. This time, let's, um, let's split this into quarters. It'll be a little bit more manageable. I want to just start um, start in front of the legs, but then go out the tail and back. Just want to get some wool on this little tail, you know, tailbone that we made here. You don't have to keep that pointy. Nah, it's gonna get like totally covered with feathers and more wool. I'm just trying to figure out how to. Okay. Smooth that out. Now we want to do with this other quarter, we want to do a little X um, in between here. Just when you do this, make sure that you're not wrapping around the leg. We're not, that's not part of what we're doing yet. We will, but so maybe I'll go around the body, just around the body, and then across between the legs around the tail and now I can cross back the other way. So I don't care how you do it, as long as you make an X and it's symmetrical and you're not wrapping actually around the leg bone. I can do it again this way and then this way. So it just gives a little, a little, and then it's just awkward to wrap this because it's not a direction I'm used to going gives a little separation between the front legs here so it doesn't look like they're coming out of the same same place. Okay, let's get another eight inch piece. Let's go ahead and split it into quarters. So you can have four nice pieces to work with. There's some fuzzy core That's wool we got. Funny. Okay, this time we're going to do a special wrap in this hook that's going to put all the wool in here rather than if we just keep going around um, we don't want more wool up here we want to start making this head round so what it looks like is a wrap around the back of the head then I come through this hook and I go right around the front of the head so I'm actually changing direction I'm, f I'm doing like an infinity, um, like a figure eight with the X being in this little hook. So I'm never wrapping right here. Now I'm going to go around the back of the head, through the X, and around the front of the head. And around the back of the head, and then around the front of the head. And that makes a little herringbone and puts it all right in that hook. And you can felt that just to, just to get it to stick. Now with another eight inch piece, quarter, I wanna smooth this out and add some width this way by going around the whole thing and then coming this way. <laughs> Looks funny. It's always like they have a little injury. <laughs> yeah. So now he's starting to get a little head. Now we're going to ignore the neck. These guys look like they have great big thick necks. But I actually leave the neck completely unfelted. That way they can tip their heads. They can turn all the way around like owls do. So if you were to just felt that solid, he would just be stuck like this. So. We leave the neck all skinny in there. So the next piece is going to come onto the body, like here to here. So I'm going to leave that neck skinny. So I'm just going to start below the neck, wrap the body, and now I'm going to figure eight on top. Last time we did it between the legs. But this time we're going to figure it right in this little spot here. And we'll go ahead and add this last piece. 
Got to get him nice and fat. You are chunking him right up. Yeah. What do you call an owl with armor? Um, I don't know. A night owl. <laughs> I like that one. Okay, sometimes I put a little bit more meat at the top of the legs, um, and I think I'll do that with the oatmeal. I have a four inch piece here. I'm gonna split it in half. This might be a, have been a half of the four inch piece from the beak. So I'm just gonna hold the wool on the body, come down the leg, two wraps, come back up. So that's, I guess that's three wraps total and return to the body. And that just brings the leg together with the with the body so it doesn't look so like he's got sticks sticking out of his I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do oatmeal the whole way down the leg so just get these little thighs on so I'm going to hold it with my thumb on the body go down turn around and return to the body that brings it all together. This blending here of this onto the body is what brings it together. If I were just to wrap around the leg, it would still look um, unattached to the body. Cool. I still feel like he needs a nice big wrap on his body. So I'm going to take an 8 inch piece. I like this ends weird. I'm going to split it in half and just, again, ignoring the neck, keep the neck skinny, just wrap this body. Yeah, that's getting better. Sometimes you just got to chunk them out. So this is like my first time really stabbing, or I mean I have stabbed, but um, if you wrap smoothly and tightly, the wool will kind of stay where it should and um, not need to be stabbed so much. Hello. Hello. This is day two. We still have a couple of shapes to make with our core wool. This is, I have a lot left from my one half um, of what was in the kit for one owl. I want to make a nice big chest pillow. So I'm going to take a piece about eight inches long, eight or nine inches long, leave it whole, and just fold it up in about a two to three inch pillow, poof, and then stick it on. <laughs> so I'm just coming around the sides and still staying away from that neck. So I've got the rolled edge at the top and bottom and the raw or fringy edge coming around the side because it'll just kind of taper and blend into the body. That's a chunky little owl now. It is chunky. I was making them too skinny, like, because their heads get really big, really fast, so. And you really want to avoid the neck, like, go ahead and give them that kind of ridge there, that big chest poof. Down here, I'm just trying to stay away from the legs. I want the legs to remain independent and not get wool lock, which is where you felt something together that should be a mobile joint. So I don't have to stab too much in the middle. I'm more concentrating on getting it tacked on on the sides, but 
just going around a little bit. Okay, that's good. Now he's got a nice big chest. So you got to imagine um, there'll be wings here too, so that'll get even bulkier. So for the head, <laughs> I start by making um, um, sort of like making eye sockets. So it's a double decker shape. Let me see what I do here. Big double decker, double decker eyes. Four inches and a half, two times. Okay, let me see what I do. I said four inches. I'm looking at my notes. This is what I'm blabbing about. So four inches in half. So double decker taco is it gets folded and then it gets folded back again. So it doesn't have to be quite in half. Um, I might stab um, at about it's at about a third. Fold that down. Stab the next third, and then fold that back. So what it leaves you is a pretty thick, almost like you're making a pillow, except you've got some some fringe. So let's do that again. I mean, you could just you could just fold it, but it gets away from you a little bit. It's good to stab it, help the um, by stabbing into the stab it wabbit. It kind of helps give you that that um, delineation of that fold, and it works um, because it gets stuck in there a little bit. It helps you fold it and keep everything in place. You can actually like put a little tension on it. And this is going to help us create the width to the head and a place to put the eyes. So you take these pillows, fringe pointing back, and you make a C shape, and the eye is going to go right in there. So, excuse me, i got to lean in, but one side gets tacked to the top of the head. You're not even in it. I'm not even in it? Nope. Where's the camera? <laughs> it's magic. I mean, I'm working on my surface. And then the other side gets tacked under the chin. And leave that hole there. It's gonna to start to look like ET in one second. So then we'll do the other side, tack to the top of the head. And tacked under the chin. Sorry, I know I've got extra owl in the way. And the fringe just points just points back like he's sticking his head out the car window. <laughs> so before we go any further, I want to go ahead and put two great big eyes in there. So I start with the black and I take about um, about a six inch piece. Got to get them nice and big. Split it in half lengthwise and we're going to wrap this on the round end of the Zoli tool. Had some schmutz in it. And it's just a simple wrap straight around. It looks huge. It is huge. And since we went straight around, it's a good idea to give it a stab because I didn't crisscross at all, like just to keep things from shifting too much. Don't stab your Zoli tool, stay off to the side. Um, I can leave that on there actually. And do the other one and make sure that I'm getting them the same size. So always give it a little tug to smooth it out. Looks about right. Alright. Then I put these in with the ends facing forward. So one end goes into the back of the head and the other end faces forward. Now it's a little tricky because there's nothing behind this eye. It's, it's, I mean, there's a little bit of this shape there, but so it's a little bit of a combination of holding it in place and felting it into the place that you want. If you're not careful, you could shove it right all the way <laughs> through the back of his head. So 
You're putting the flat part forward. I'm putting the, the circle part. I'm putting the the ends. One end goes towards the back, and one end comes forward. So the wrapped part, it's as if the Zulu tool were like this. Okay. Yeah. So can you? I don't know if you can see kind of. No, I, I kind of can't. Yeah. 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 So I gotta hold it in there, and I'm somewhat you know, felting the eyeball, but I'm also felting it into place a little bit. Ooh. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy, man. So now I can go around and felt these off-white eye sockets kind of into it. This one wants to bug out a little bit. So these big black balls give you... <laughs> Black eyes give you a really um, good surface to create your iris and your eyeball on. There's no way around things sometimes. Okay. Good. Now, he's a little flat-headed. They have, they actually, owls, we think of them as these big round faces, but their heads are actually very deep. So we need a couple of pieces on the back here. I'm gonna go ahead and felt this um, fluff around. This uh, double decker taco fluff. Felt it onto the back of the head. Notice the neck is still free and clear. <laughs> Owls actually have a really long neck inside that. Um, all that, all those feathers. All right, taco, my notes say taco on the back of the head. So let's take another four inch piece. <laughs> Everyone needs a taco on the back of their head. Needs a taco on the back of that. Um, a four inch piece is like if you were to grab with the end of your palm at the end of the roving and pull, it's like the width of your hand is a four inch piece. And then this is gonna be a simple taco, not a double decker, cause I just need to get, probably gonna end up doing two. So just to fold over, felting it a little bit into place so I have some control over it. And then it gets put on the back of the head and just let the fringe come down. Looks like a bad wig. Yep, it's exactly what it looks like. I'm going to sneak. Excuse me. There might be another one. No, that was it. Bless you. Thank you. So I'm coming around really like right across the, the top fold of the taco is right across the center of the back of the head. This is a little nimbly wimbly like it's not, it seems like not as solid as we usually build things in the beginning. All right, I'm going to do another one. Let me make this one more like three inches. And instead of folding right in half, I'm gonna fold just this top over. And that makes it a little less bulky for me, so I'm not quite as chunky out. I used a little less wool and I folded it at about a third. So he's really getting into a weird Phase. I'm gonna shingle this about a half an inch above the last one. And it looks like a great big poof head, but it all gets felted down. What do you call a baby owl who is swimming? Um, it's more of a play on words than a joke. Just okay. be forewarned. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to grunt. I'm going to sigh. <laughs> I don't know what. A moist owlet. Oh, I was thinking owlet. That's funny. I like that one. All right, so I've got some bulgy eyes that are rattling around in this head. I've got some crazy courtroom looking wig on him. Don't worry, 
Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm hot, so I take my I gotta take a layer off. Okay. And now my nose is dry. You might as well pause it. <laughs> I can't ready to blow my nose. I think we should get that on film. <laughs> is everyone blowing? Is Sarah blowing her nose, everyone? I know that nobody likes to hear me sniffle. Got your little sniffles all gone? Yes. Well, for the moment. All right. Now is the fun part. Well, hopefully you've been having fun already. Oh, yeah. Wrapping those toes was a hoot. <laughs> Who's having fun? Okay, I think I want to give this one some fuzzy legs. So I'm going to take a little bit of my oatmeal. I'll just pull off a strip. I wasn't very um, precise about that. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll just pull off a strip and wrap down. Um, it's about a six inch piece. And I pulled it right off of this whole big piece. Gonna wrap down as if he's got furry, fuzzy, feathery legs. And then I'm gonna put a little bit, go around this foot one time. Sorry, I'll get it to where you can see. Just went down and went around the foot and then just kind of let that end fringe out over the toes. Make it kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? ambiguous okay yeah I like that little little more sweet and fuzzy baby fuzz oh Max had a different kind of fuzz going <laughs> that you're now discussing oh, yeah. on YouTube <laughs> Hope he doesn't watch this tutorial. <laughs> no, it's not bad. He's 13, and I just looked at his face, and he had a little mustache. He'll never watch it. Not his <laughs> whole life. He'll never see my baby owl. I'm sorry. I know you guys can't see when I have this. Doing the same thing over here. You're an old pro at this now. You don't even need me to tell you or show you. Okay. Two legs. Good. Okay. What kind of owl am I going to make? I think I'm going to make this kind because it should, allows me to show you um, the, the most stuff. Like the, the barn owl is a little bit simpler in coloring. Um, it doesn't have the, I don't know what you call these. It's where their ears are. But And then this guy's just another shape. So look at pictures, you know, have fun with it. Look at pictures, maybe do a little sketch so you know where you're headed. Um, and do two different ones. You're going to have enough fiber to, um, to do different things. So where I like to start, this isn't the most exciting um, part, but is to lay in this fiber all on the belly. So turn them upside down, spread its legs out, because you're going to start under the tail. In your bundle of top coat, you have um, Corydale and you have Grits. They're two off-whites, um, so you have a choice. I think I'll make this one nice and um, do the lighter white, just because so many of my other owls um, have the Grits. And you see how long this is? I can do one of two things. I can work with it long. I'll show you both ways. So I'm felting one third. I'm sorry, I'm felting, yeah, two thirds actually, sort of like the bottom two thirds. And since this is so long, I'm going to put a little bit of off white core, just a little thin piece, go in the same direction to help hold it on, you know, keep it all together, give it some volume. And then once I have that felted on, I fold this top third down and felt that. And this is called shingling, and I do it on a lot of 
different animals. It's a great way to blend colors, um, create pelts, create the look of fur without doing long fur all over the whole thing where the fur sticks off completely. Um, so the other possibility, since this is not such a large scale creature, you know, it's kind of small and I could have a little more fuzz doing it this way, is to cut the fiber in half. And I usually restack because I don't want it to look like it was just cut. So that just gives me a little bit of a, you know, um, less a random edge, less blunt edge. Now, I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to have one third of it belted over that last fold. I think this is going to be a little bit better way to work. It's an extra step, but this length makes so much more sense on this size. I'm going to take a little bit of off-white core. Fibers are going the same direction, I'm not going across. I'm just going the same direction. Felt that center one third and then fold this over and felt it down. So the long piece worked to cover the tail. The long piece worked, I, you know, if I were doing this again, I would probably just keep using halves, like we just use halves for the whole thing. Okay, and you can start to see how it has this, um, see that's a little long, so I can even trim that. And since I'm trimming this way, it won't look blunt um, because once you, you know, smooth it back out, it'll be layered. Now that I'm up here, I need to stagger. Like I need to get one over here and one over here. I can't just go straight up the middle. So I can save a little time by pulling some staple lengths out and cutting them all at once. So instead of doing, you know, one at a time, one at a time. If people are doing this with a single needle at this point, they wish they had a pen tool. Yeah, the pen tool really is super duper useful, like right away, even if you're a beginner. And I'm not an overseller, you know, I'll tell you what you need. <laughs> and, but, you know, my dad always said, buy the best tools that you can afford. And it's gonna, the reason is because it makes um, your enjoyment and your success, you know, that much more likely because you've got this tool that's helping you do the job right. That's what tools are for. So the pen tool, I'm using it with two right now, two needles because I have strong needles in here. Um, sometimes three feels like too much stab from, I don't like it, it's too much. So I take one out. But generally, we put um, 38s in it. I, we got a batch of 38s that were stronger than our normal 38s, and that's what I have two of those in here right now. So this is, you know, it's just the whole time-consuming part of this process, but it's not difficult. No, you get a lot covered in a short time. You get a lot covered. That's the other benefit of shingling. So. It looks for it looks like fur without the super like labor intensive amount of work. It blends colors really well. Like if I wanted to change colors right now, I actually should have done that. Um, I would have gone from dark to light, um, but I started light, so I'll just stick with it. Um, every time you have fringe overlapping fringe, it gives you a very nice subtle color change. I'll show you on um, on the back. We'll do it when we do his back do something different. That's the fun thing about these owls too, like, I'm just kind of making them up. I'm not following, you know, a specific breed or... So I'll do one in the center now. I still have plenty from my pre-cut pieces. Grits, um, the other color grits might work the same way in terms of cutting it first. All these have a really long staple length. I mean, six or seven inches is just like crazy length to work with. I'm 
This makes them even fluffier. Some of, the, some of the, if you really want to make it look like a baby, like definitely look up some images, but they're what, it's kind of similar with other animals. Their markings won't be as distinctive. Everything will be kind of fluffy and um, their coloring will be more homogenized, you know, like they won't have distinctive stripes or color changes until they shed out those baby baby feathers. So I'm just going to keep working my way up. I've probably got one, two, three, four, five more sections. I thought I would show maybe a little different look on the chest. So I'm going to pull some of the same um, Corydale and cut it in half. And because you could put like little flecks in here, but I was like, oh, wouldn't it be cute if there was like a little stripe? So I don't know whether to do it in gray. It might be too. If I were doing flecks, I might do gray. If I'm doing a little stripe, I think I'm going to use Polworth. So this is like the brownish color in there. And I'm going to keep it whole because it's not quite as long as the Corydale is. Well, first let me restack this. So restacking is you're holding it by the ends and then trying to keep it lined up, pulling the ends apart and putting it back together again to lose that blunt edge. And I don't need quite that much. And then I'm just going to put a little, mm, maybe it will cut in half longer than I thought. So funny, I use my scissors right handed always because you were forced to. So if you wanted to put little flecks all through the whole thing, I would just, when you restack, um, throw some gray in there without blending too much. Uh, it's gonna look like he's wearing a little bow tie. Yeah, just I don't know, some little. Okay, um, let's work on the rest of the body and then do the head because that way we won't have all this fluff around the head that we're trying to, you know, work around. We'll do the body and then um, the head will be the crowning glory, so to speak. So the next thing to do is to come up the back. So this is an opportunity to put some cute little tail feathers on. So let me see what was in my kit. I have some, this is going to be different for everybody. I have some puffy alpaca. I think I'll use that around the face. I've got some fun Icelandic, which I think that would match this coloring and be a good tail. So I'm going to do that this one. I'm just going to kind of stack these up. I don't know if I quite need all of it. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. Kind of matches his little... Let me get this dark one as a stripe in the middle. To match his little stripe on his chest. And then these ends, I'm going to use a little brush um, to loosen it up a little bit. Just going to felt easier if I don't have quite such a chunky little end to it. But Icelandic has this built-in felting fiber on its end that actually felt really well. So this is very just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like in painting this would be painterly. It's just suggestive. I'm not like, you know, sculpting a detailed tail. So I'm gonna let it stick off kind of where I want, you know, the length I want it to be. And then this is just going to get covered up a little bit. I might actually keep some of this, since it is so long, keep some of this coloring. So since I said I wanted to show you some shading, and this fiber has a natural transition from gray to light, 
Let's do a gray to grit shingle on the back and I'll, that'll show you how to blend colors. It's a little hard to work on because he's so <laughs> he's got a, such a wobbly belly. Alright, I'm gonna blend some of this Shetland gray with a little bit of my light Polworth just because this gray is really dark. And maybe a little bit of my dark Polworth. I'm gonna hand blend it. So that's just a pull and restack. If you were going to make a whole, use a lot of this, um, you could use a hand carter. So if you just keep pulling and restacking, it's going to blend. So this will be cool because this will be our dark, and then I'll mix the two Paulworths for the next layer, and then I'll mix, I'll just use the light Paulworth, and then I'll use grits. You'll see. Okay, now I'm going to cut this in half because it's so long. This is involved, this little owl. It's simple, but there's a lot that you can do, which makes it a really fun transition project from, you know, the person who's just made uh, pumpkins and hedgehogs. Just something more. Yeah, just like a little more fun with the fiber, you know, a little more possibilities. Okay, so we're gonna stick this pointing down, felt the center one third, Probably make his wings this color too. And then fold the top third over. You hear about the owl get together? No, I didn't. I wasn't invited. It was a real hootenanny. <laughs> Who says hootenanny? Some people. Owls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna do, what did I say I was gonna do? The two Paulworths. So this will be like a one step lighter. Cut it in half. Cause it doesn't have that dark gray in it. I hope you guys, if you're making this owl the same way that I am this time, I hope the next time that you... So see how when you let that fringe blend over the gray fringe, it's a, it's a smooth transition because you've got fringy ends going over fringy ends. So anyway, I hope if when you do your second owl that you do something a little different and with your coloring. All right, now, this time, I'm gonna take just light Paulworth. I'm gonna cut it in half. And we put so much fiber in this kit. Oh my gosh, it's got a lot. It's a little bit more than I need, and I need to take just a little bit off. This can be pretty thin layers. It's already got this great big piece of Icelandic on it. So if people did not use that, they would want to go a little thicker? They might need, uh, yeah, they might need to because, like I'm stabbing into this big poof of Icelandic. The, the trick of putting a little bit of core wool that core, um, you know, looks the same is, what's the word I'm looking for, Myla? Coordinates. Coordinates. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to switch to, maybe I'll put a little bit of the light Paulworth in with the grits, and this will be our top layer. So putting that little bit of core wool in to the shingle can help, help it felt well, bulk it up a little, give it a little more substance. Yeah, you're going to end up with all kinds of little pieces of the sides fringier, so I'm putting it down. So 
that gives you such a nice blend. And one of these guys, I did, maybe it's the one, I had a fourth owl and I sent it to my sister. But one of them I did this on the wings too. I made the wings really fuzzy by doing this shingling. Funny. Funny. Okay, so he needs wings now. 